Hello and welcome to Kabbalah Night. Kabbalah Night. We're going to read uh, an excerpt from the Ramchal in a sefer called Adir B'marom. I've not prepared it because I want to do it live, yeshiva style. And if it goes well, uh, it would be kind of a translated blog post. It's extremely important gear Torah here. You ready to rock and roll? Are you guys ready to rock and roll? One or two. All right. Ach tzarich shatido ki lekohadvarim ha'ele yesh zman kvua. You got to know that all these things that he was talking about have a set time. Now that is a verse that I want to look up. 66.24 in Isaiah. Ready? 66.24 in Isaiah. Are you ready? 66.24 in Isaiah. Are you ready? Uh, there it is. Ready? And they will go out and see the corpses of the men who rebelled against me. For their decay will not cease, and their fire will not be extinguished, and they will lie in disgrace before all mankind. Yeah? Hello? Hello? And then he brings a verse in Daniel, 12-2. 12-2 Daniel, hello. 12-2 Daniel. Many of those who sleep in the dusty earth will awaken. These for everlasting life, and these for shame, for everlasting abhorrence. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. All right. All right, no, no problem. However, the emissaries, Shalom, Bapam, Echad, Yitukar, Nakul, Biyamo, Samashiach. You got to know the truth of the matter is that not in one time will everything be fixed in the days of the Messiah. Ki ha emeshetikun gadol yitukun vaday miyad? Because in truth, shetikun gadol, it's a big job. Yitukun vaday miyad. It should be all fixed immediately. By the time you fix everything, it's going to be a long time. Very interesting finish, isn't it, Justin Becker? The big tikkun at the end is very big. It takes a long time. And in a very long time, you make a lot of different tikkunim. And you have a lot of elevations that the worlds are elevating this one after this one. See, your problem is you think there's like one world. What if there were 5,000 worlds? And behold, immediately with the coming of the Messiah, he will perform one repair. And 
So, Justin Becker, isn't your question, what is the essential and immediate job of the Messiah? Type one. He has to fix the Vahusha Klipas Noga. The Klipas Noga should separate from the other three very difficult levels of Klipa. And then it has to become subordinated under holiness. You understand what subordinated under holiness means? I will give you a, a uh, an analogy. How many of you have ever heard of American football? Any of you? One, two? How many of you have ever heard of the Cincinnati Bengals? The Bengals are not subordinated to a winning system. Type one. How many of you have ever heard of the New England Patriots? Type one or two. The New England Patriots players are subordinate to a winning environment. Type one. Do not type two. Now, reinstitute in place of Patriots and winning, Klebus Noga and holiness. Type one. The other levels of Klipa are not subordinate to holiness. They are akin to the Cincinnati Bengals and their lackluster performances. Type 1. So the job of the Messiah is to bring those people who are, whose souls are embedded in Klipa's Noga to be subordinated under holiness. Can you imagine if a Cincinnati Bengal player were to become a free agent and go to the New England Patriots? Would that player suddenly become subordinate? And it happened, didn't it, Justin Becker? It's called Chad Johnson, if I remember correctly, correct? A Cincinnati player went to the Patriots, even though he was cut shortly, relatively, he was subordinate to that system. All right. And then when it is subordinate, it will receive. Or better yet, it will be employed with a greater kayach or power. That it will. It will holify. You hear my new word I just made up? It will holify itself. Do you understand my new word? It will holify itself. It will drive its own holiness. And the rest of the difficult clippers will remain distant from holiness completely. So that if you have a Cincinnati Bengal lifelong player, will he ever know what subordinate to winning even looks like Justin Becker? So if he got into the Hall of Fame, he would still have no idea what winning football is. Type one. And according to this, it makes the world with like two things. The first is vengeance in the nations and those that are from the side of total evil and the secret of the three difficult clippers. So they say that the Messiah will cause vengeance in the nations. So therefore, those that are completely bound to evil, which is the secret of the three clippers, right? Let's say in football, there's something called completely wicked, type one. Type one. 
We'll call it fumbling is okay. Being late for meetings is okay. And um, not practicing hard is okay. Type one. We call that the Cincinnati Bengals. What happens when Bill Belichick takes over for the Cincinnati Bengals? Is that called making vengeance in the nations? Type one. And those that are bound by evil will have a very difficult time. And the second is Garrus of the nations. Now keep in mind, the first word for nations was Goyim. And the second word was umot. Notice the difference. So there's something called players and professionals in football. Type one. The Cincinnati Bengals are football players. And the New England Patriots are sports professionals. Do you follow my analogy? So the second task is Gairus. Doing Gairus of the nations from what remained of them. So if you have, let's change the analogy. Ready to change the analogy? We have something called the Pro Bowl. There's something called the Pro Bowl. The regular season is evil football players. You understand that? Or no, you know what? Let's call it the Super Bowl. Have you ever heard of the Super Bowl? So in the regular season, you have evil football players, even the New England Patriots, okay? Everyone is evil because in the regular season is winning a pass, or sorry, is losing a crime in the regular season? No, it's not. No, it's not. Everyone type, no, it's not. But in the Super Bowl, is losing a possibility? Is can you are you allowed to lose the Super Bowl? No, you're not. The goal is only to win the Super Bowl. You understand my analogy? Nobody will fire you for losing in the regular season. In the Super Bowl, your objective is only to win. So football players are evil. And the regular season, type one. Now, if you make it to the Super Bowl, okay, my team made it to the Super Bowl. That's called the remnant of the nations, type one. And that remnant of the nations goes through Gairus, becoming Gair. Why? Because now that we made it to the Super Bowl, We are subordinate to good. We don't believe in losing anymore. Type one. We don't believe in losing. We don't believe in evil. We don't condone turning the ball over. Do you follow my analogy? So all the evil acts that we did in the regular season, they have disappeared. We are not like the rest of the evil football players, correct? By the time the Super Bowl happened this year, were the Cincinnati Bengals evil? Type yes. Why? Because those players were at home watching, and they believe it is okay to turn the ball over. Is it okay for Tom Brady to turn the ball over in the Super Bowl? No, it's not. Do you follow my analogy? One or two. I.e., the standards elevated. The rules elevated. Everything got elevated. So there are those among the people of the world that will elevate towards the end of days, the playoffs of the Super Bowl. And everyone who doesn't make it to the Super Bowl, it's not that they're going to die and we kill them or blah, blah, blah. It's that they are subordinate to evil ways. Do you understand that? (laughs) Shahaya toy shavihem la vodas Hashem. The good is the, 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 those that serve God. So when the Messiah comes, his coming over a long time 
will rile the nations. That riling the nations is only to allow a gerus to happen that some of the nations will let go of evil, cling and elevate to good, they will gear themselves and serve God type one. That is the task of the Messiah. Like it is written in Sphania 3.9, Zephaniah, then I will turn to the nations with a pure speech. And behold, then they will not, the, the, the three evil layers will not receive or work with any power from holiness. Will the Cincinnati Bengals ever even know what Bill Belichick is about? Say no. So they will never have the winning experience. I don't know about you, but I've heard interviews, players of the twilight of their career, they go to the Patriots only to know what winning is like. Have you ever heard that before, you sports fans out there? They simply want to know what it's like to win after having played for a while. Those that never won never really played the game. I wrestled in high school. I never had fun doing it because I was evil. Do you understand the analogy? I didn't listen to the coach. I didn't train hard, and I didn't know what I was doing. But the guys who were who are state champions and All-Americans, they had fun. They were not evil. They were good, and they served the sport. Do you understand the analogy? One or two. And the word for hard or difficult makes sense here. There are those that are hard to work with, and there are those that are a, a pleasure to work with. The The three evil or wicked or difficult layers have no attachment or relevance with the nation of Israel. Rock They are simply not swallowed at their root. Rather, they are allowed to exist. They will undergo their refinement in Gehenim. The and they will continue having a relevance to the Amim. To the Omos, sorry. To the Omos. So the Omot, who become Ger, and are subordinate to the Holy, and are serving God with a clear speech, i.e. Torah, they will be attached likewise to the, the goyim, the evil layers, therefore you have the three uh, domains. Holy Israel, attached to it the Noga, and the three difficult levels that are, that are 100% not attached to Israel. Type 1. He kamo shabi he schavram beklipas noigin, hayalehem eza kurva ela kadusha. The three wicked layers, and we understand what I mean by wicked, right? We're talking like Klippa wicked, right? Bengal football players are actually not wicked people, type one. It's all a matter of context. Tom Brady would call the Bengals wicked, type one, because in Tom Brady's world, a fumble is an evil act, but by God himself it is not an evil act. It is just not a pure act. Type 1. So the Goyim here, language of Goyim, i.e. the Stam nations, will be attached to the Klippus Noga, which Klippus Noga is attached to the holiness. So the nations will get their holiness through the Klippus Noga, i.e. the gear. Thus now they are very distant from holiness, It'll be with them im kol ze eiza koyver el noiga. Kach kach ita shiu rochoki min a kedush yi lehem im kol ze eiza koyver el noiga. The nations who are not noga 
will be defined by their proximity to Noga. Noga is defined by its proximity to Israel. And therefore, in this time, it will be a difference between Israel Yisrael ain Misa. There will be a difference between Israel to the nations of the world, that Israel is not subject to death, and the Omos Ha'ilam Yesh Misa. The nations of the world retain death. And we refer to Isaiah 65, 20. Isaiah 65, 20. Never again will come from there a young child or old man who will not fill his days for the youth of 100 years will die and a sinner at the age of 100 years will be cursed. That the Noga will experience, I guess, a really a meaningful life. And life and death will continue. King David talks about this in the Psalms as well. That is not necessarily a bad thing. But after that, this will, this world will elevate to another level. But then the nations, the the umot, will elevate, and they will know no death. The alias heim rabus, the heim toidis alias, and their elevations are many. And they spawn generations and offspring to the Goyim beneath them. And the end matter of everything is a great day of judgment. So the final great day. Remember, all these elevations are, are happening now. You see, you see, maybe that's why actually, actually this is actually a good shot. Maybe this is why the quality of life today is actually very high. Right? Everyone is living a good life now. So that when the final elevation happens, death is removed. We say death is swallowed up forever. And the Sitra Akra will be removed completely from the creation. And then in this din will make the, the last B roar, the last. Um, what do you call that when you like sift? The last sifting and separation that even Harashimo even the imprint of evil will be removed, right? Just like if Bill Belichick did take over the Bengals, all losing culture will be out. And it won't remain any creature or creation. From all that was created from the six days of Breshis until today, except for aspects of good, all the evil will be removed. As it says in Daniel 12.2. Is that what we quoted? Daniel 12.2? Yes. And therefore, we quote again Isaiah 66.24. Since then, Akash Baruch Hu, will give Kayich to the Rishayim Lekabel Poryayim So God will give the strength to the three difficult layers of Klippa, the wicked winds. Again, wicked is a relative term. To receive their punishment. And then the time will be to remove the Samach Mim. And that is the evil of the Sitra Akra will not be found anymore in the world. So do you know why this great day of Armageddon has not come yet? Because the nations don't have the, and I mean the lower nations, don't have yet the strength to endure the removal of their evil. So while they are strengthening their ability to remove the evil in their midst, Ger elevates in Noga to a more quality life as it binds to holiness. And that binding to holiness elevates Israel to a place above death. 
So the entire creation is one, working at the same goal. Three different coordinates experiencing three different realities. Removal of evil, acquisition of holiness, and Israel's level of bestowing, which is the opposite of dying. Type 1. That is the Messianic era that we are looking forward to with the coming of the Messiah, which the repairs are many and take long. And the Messiah's job will be to do the b roar, the basically the ruckus that causes Goyim and Umot to receive their end-of-days portion. Thank you for listening. Be well.